Howdy ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first MacRetro video that has anything to do with technology in quite some time. Today we are having a look at the uh, Sega Saturn. So this is a uh, the This Is Cool edition. As you can see there, it is clearly cool. Uh, there's also another one, <coughs> very similar to this, without the This Is Cool. But I, I think I need to be reminded constantly that the, uh, the Saturn is cool. Just kidding. Alright, so what we're doing today is we are installing a Phantom Universal mod chip. Which is this little guy here. Do we have focus? Get a bit closer so you can see some of the detail on that. Look at that. So as you can see, it's a uh, the PCB version is uh, 2016 week 13 up the top there. And we are popping this into the Saturn. So to do that, we need to uh, take the Saturn apart. So that's the very first step that you've got to do. So I've already taken out, there are five screws on the underside and they're already removed. So I do apologize for that. The only other thing you want to remove is your uh, little memory, not memory, VCD card or backup battery door because that will just fall off when you take the top cover off. As I keep finding out every time I take apart a Saturn. I think I've remembered to remove it once or twice, and that's only after doing several Saturns beforehand. Alright, so this one, there's a serial number, B8F015896. So this is a uh, obviously a Japanese Saturn, which runs on 110 volts. I need to remember to use my little down converter over here. Uh, we've got more solder than I'm ever going to need. Uh, we've got the Hakko uh, FX888D over there and uh, the soldering iron. So for your soldering iron you'd want to be using something around oh, 20 to 25 watt. Uh, the lower wattage the better but obviously if you're using a, well not obviously, but if you are using a purely tin solder, which are terrible, thanks Europe, you're probably going to want it to be a little bit hotter. Um, no, no, it's personal preference. You'll see when you try and heat the tin and it just doesn't do anything at all just sort of moves it around, blobs terribly. Um, me, I'm using a 6040 um, tin and lead, so that's how I roll. So once you've removed the five screws on the underside, which are thankfully all the same length on this particular model, I don't know how many other people are going to be modding a, uh, this is cool satin, I mean even I had hesitations, but Someone needed help on assembler games, and you know, you've got to help them out when they need help. And I just happened to be there. And then I remembered that I had a whole box full of these mod chips. <laughs> and I figured I should, uh, you know, probably do something about it. So let's have a little bit of a close-up look at the internals. So I haven't looked through the entire guide yet, so I'll be doing that as we record uh, for the Phantom. Now here's the... Uh, the main things you want to know are what this is, your CD assembly. So I believe this motherboard is probably VA10 or higher. But if we have a look there, we've got the model number. So it's a JVC EXL-P08. Did I just leave out six? I did, didn't I? A JVC EXL-P608. So with that information, we know that there's something funny going on. So, well, not really. There probably isn't anything funny going on. But we want to get this mod chip in. So this is a uh, ooh, 21 pin, 21 pin drive. Um, so on the Phantom, if we have a look, on the Phantom, we've got uh, at the top, you've got Motherboard 20, Motherboard 21 over there. So on CD21. Okay, so they're on they're on opposing sides, so that's nice and easy. So if you've got a Sanyo drive, which I believe are the ones that have the uh, 20 pin connectors. You'll be using those two. If not, you'll be using these two. Now up the uh, top here, we've got a little 
a switch essentially, a solder switch. So we're going to be soldering JVC to the middle and not letting the SYO, which is Sanyo, go anywhere near it because we don't have a Sanyo drive. And you get two choices for your 5 volt connector down here, which is very nice. So you can pick either one of those. We'll also be checking with the uh, multimeter um, for where the voltages are, just so you can get an idea. So when you're working on your sat, <coughs> pardon me, be very careful of this area over here. You don't want to touch anything in there. Even when it's unplugged, uh, these capacitors here, these little guys, <laughs> hold um, quite a bit of charge. And if you touch any of these pins, or especially anything in toward the, well, anywhere really, it will zap you and uh, it can be lethal. So proceed with caution. Um, what I usually tend to do is I tend to turn it on, turned off just to make sure it's discharged as much as it can be. And before you touch any PCBs, ground yourself. So touch something metal so any static that's lying around dissipates. So with the, uh, the phantom chip, okay, so we've got the two cables. Okay, I can't do this while holding the camera, so I'm going to put this back down. Whoop, there we go. You get uh, two ribbon cables, which is very kind and very generous. Now, the best way to tell which is the 20 and the 21 pin is to uh, simply line them up with each other. And you'll see, you'll almost see, there we go, that one of these things is not like the other. What is what is the camera tracking? It's tracking. There we go. <laughs> oh, I love I love technology. So this one's our 21, and that's our 20. So the 20 for this particular drive you don't need. So toss it aside. Now back to the Phantom chip itself. So apologies, this will be a bit of a long video because I am rambling, and uh, well, that's the way I do things. So get used to it, you punks. So. The pins, which, which, so you've got blue on one side, which is not going to conduct anything, and uh, silver on the other side. So you want all your silver to be facing that way. So you want it to be facing outward, I guess. So the trick is, oh, let's, let's, let's do this, because this is, these are fun, these locking mechanisms. So it's a bit hard to see because it's black on, sort of black there, but you've got to lift, you'll notice that it's sort of a, a seesaw, whoa, actually that would be a terrible seesaw, there's no, there's no fulcrum. Anyway, you've got to be pretty careful of these, not to, uh, oh, where is, where, where is it going, where, what is it focusing on? You just need to be careful not to snap that off. As you can see, it moves pretty freely, and they're all... Oh, some of them are a bit tighter. Okay, that's fine. Just be careful not to snap them off. <laughs> All they do is they essentially push the, uh, when that locks in, it pushes these pins, or the flex cable, up onto the uh, pins in the socket. So all we want to do right now is just pop that in, facing out, but as you can see, you want to try and keep these two things popped out. They'll try and go back in. So we're putting the shorter cable toward the motherboard. There we go. So that's in nice and flush. And one thing we do need to do before actually putting this in is check that this satin powers on and works. So by default, the Phantom Universal won't actually initiate if the drive door is detected as being open which is all controlled by a little, hmm, let's have a look, a very fragile little switch toward the back here, which of course just happens to be right on top of the uh, power supply. That guy there, or rather right next to the power supply, there is a little trigger way down there. So you can, some people uh, on other mod chip things I've seen tend to tape it or put something against it. 
but in this case I'm just going to replace the lid because it is, well, honestly, just that much easier. Plus, you don't want to mess with something that's over 20 years old and have the, um, the drive door get stuck as being open. I guess you could always take it completely apart then, which I'll have to do one day. So anyway, it's uh, safest to put the lid back on because then you're also not exposing yourself to the power part. And track down uh, one of those uh, figure eight cables. Yes. Um, if possible, one that has a Japanese suit. or American in my case, and that's another figure eight. No, not a figure eight, a kettle cord. Draw of miscellany. Show me the cable. Where is it? Huh. Well, this could be problematic. It's my figure eight cable. Probably could cut this out of the video, couldn't I? But I probably won't. 